Good evening again, everyone. I'm Bill Edwards, along with head coach Tim Stowers. Welcome to Georgia Southern Football 93, Part 2. Uh, a big win today, Tim, in what was typical Georgia Southern fashion, almost a trademark of this team, the bend but don't break. And, you know, second week in a row we've had one of these where the defense has saved us there at the last minute, and I'm tired of it. I want it cleared up. Well, there's really a theme of this football team is that it's finding a way to make the play and win the football game and look forward to the critical situations in the game and and find a way to make the play. And we made one more play than Eastern Kentucky did. You know, this football game didn't turn out any different than I thought it would. It would turn out to be field position, turnovers, uh, and also kicking game. And we were very, we feel very fortunate to beat a very fine Eastern Kentucky football team. There were some very uh, critical uh, moments in this game uh, that, uh, that that where we came through, got a first down when we needed it. The defense got a got a knock down a pass when they needed to. There's going to be about four or five critical situations in the football game where you're going to have to respond to make the play. Where you have to make a first down, you have to make a catch, you have to make an interception, you have to have a sack, you have to punt the football from your own end zone. It doesn't really matter when it is. You have to be able to respond to that critical situation. This football team does that about as good as any football team I've been around. All right. We'll be back to take a look at those first half highlights right after we pause for this. The extra edition. We just beat uh, Eastern Kentucky today. And it was a little revenge as well, uh, Tim, because uh, they'd beaten us, I believe, the last two times they played us down here and up there. The last so. two times they played us, they'd come out on the good in the stick in the W column. You know, they'd beaten us uh, in 1990 here. Uh, 45 and typical, untypical Georgia Southern Eastern football, a high scoring affair. Uh, then they beat us up there 10 to 6 in uh, 1991. We had a great defensive front. Uh, of course, we they, we beat them back in the playoffs in 1988 down here. I believe the score was 21 to 17, maybe one of the greatest football games in the history of Paulson Stadium. I think this this was a great football game and in a very similar fashion. Indeed, the parallels were incredible. But the way things started Saturday, the Georgia Southern Eagles could easily have redefined the term coming out smoking. As the Comet himself, Chris Wright took the opening kick and darn near broke it. As it was, he got 42 yards to midfield. Joe Dupree and company then swung into action like a well-oiled machine, and Joe shocked everybody, especially the defenders, when he hit split in Alfonso Harris for 33 yards down to the EKU 17 on the very first play from scrimmage. After suffering a procedure penalty, Chris Wright got almost half of the 16 yards needed with a sweep to the right, and Shaft and Fraley got the rest on third and two from the Colonel's nine, and Georgia Southern was out front seven to nothing. We threw an early play action pass, which we thought would be open all week, uh, and Afonso Harris, I think he started the football game for Dexter, uh, Dexter Dawson because Dexter has been suffering from a little bit of the flu early in the week and we wanted to play him sparingly, but the front, Joe made a good throw. He had good protection, and the funds made a big catch, good catch. And then uh, then I think we for our first touchdown, we pitched the football to Shaft and Fraley. We had some good blocks on the corner. He got, I think he scored from nine yards out to go up 7 up. Well, the first drive, we knew that we had to come out and score points from the first drive that we had. And a couple of pieces that I got, I just read, this, read my blocks and got in the end zone. What do you think the key factor was in, in, in winning this ball game? Because uh, it looked like, man, they were just running all over us for a while. Yeah, uh, the key the key factor was our uh, defense stayed in there, hung in there, and, and um, stopped them when time came for them to be stopped. Shafton was right. From there on out, it was a defensive battle royal that would go right down to the wire. And as is typical with a lot of Georgia Southern defensive teams, Eastern Kentucky got mucho yardage in the middle of the field. Here... They stop Leon Brown for no gain. Then he rips off a first down going off left tackle on the next play. But guys like Alex Mash would stop third and three calls. Here dropping Brown for a three-yard loss. That brought up the proverbial punting situation. And this sign pretty much sums it up. Then, late in the first quarter, what we'd hoped and prayed for all year long looked like it might finally come to fruition as Dexter Dawson fielded Tim McName's punt, and for a brief, shining moment, it looked like he was touchdown bound. As it was, it was a 52-yard return to the enemy 14, and the crowd was in a frenzy. The euphoria would soon die. 
That's because the football gods were not so kind. The Eagles couldn't buy a yard on this drive, and Georgia Southern had to settle for a field goal, which, as it turns out, didn't materialize either. Reed Haley's kick hooked off to the left, and the Eagles were no further ahead than they were before as the curtain came down on the opening period. The second quarter began with EKU finally breaking the scoring ice as tailback Mike Pinham made 16 yards up the middle on a draw play. But the Southern defense shut them down when they had to. Savannah's own Walter Flowers on third and nine from the GSU 27 knocked Greg Couch's pass out of harm's way. Yeah, it was a defensive battle and everything. You know, the offense, they were moving the ball pretty well, and they had a great offensive line. They had a terrific running back, Leon Bryan. He was great, and uh, he's a hard run and everything. We just had to buckle down and get to him. So with that business taken care of, it was Mark Collins coming on for a 44-yard field goal. He booted it straight through, and the Eagles' lead was down to four. But the Colonels, late in the quarter, began another drive, eating up more real estate than an unscrupulous land developer until the ghost of Paulson Stadium got in the spirit of things. It was on second and five from the Eagle Eight, and watch closely as Mike Penman is hit and fumbles. Number 11, Danny Britt, in his first start, got it. He then rolled out of the pile, unnoticed by most of the officials, who then spent the better part of the rest of the afternoon looking for the ball that Danny kept explaining to them he'd recovered. Alex hit the guy, and I'm... Um... He had he lost it. He was standing straight up, and I dove in and caught it in the air before it ever hit the ground. But what happened was I rolled out of the pile, and none of the uh, referees saw it. And they were in there trying to um, find the ball. And I had to, I walked up and tapped one on the shoulder like, here's the ball. I have it right here. And one guy um, did see the whole thing, and he came in, and they um, had a conference and straightened it out. And thank goodness for small favors. And so the first half ticked away. The Eagles went to the locker room, leading 7-3. to three. Well, it was bend but don't break today. As a matter of fact, uh, it was absolutely outstanding football game, and we're going to be back to talk about the second half. But first, we're going to pause for this timeout, and then a little halftime feature on a man that we wish the best of luck and the best of recovery to, uh, the voice of the Eagles, Nate Hirsch, in the hospital in St. Joseph's Hospital in Savannah, recovering from heart surgery, uh, had, a, had an operation earlier this week. We understand he's doing well. And, Nate, this one's for you coming up right after this. No Georgia Southern fan can forget the infamous Hugo Bowl. It was a Thursday night in 1989, the only night game ever played in Paulson Stadium to date. And while Charleston was getting pounded by the full force of this awesome storm, Georgia Southern was pounding Middle Tennessee State. And we featured the voice of the Eagles, Nate Hirsch, at halftime. Well, I think everything is so exciting now with the university status announcement. Students, you know, like asked me from Atlanta, Tony Barnhart's down covering the game from the Atlanta paper. What is the feeling of the town on Tuesday, he asked me that. I said, we're busting at the seams with students, and we really are. Mm -hmm. You can't go around town without seeing students everywhere. And really, with this kind of a crowd tonight, I'm amazed. The students that came out, the ones that didn't wear tops, out there. <laughs> it's a typical college crowd, and for a Thursday night, amazing. How about the radio network? You and Frank just do a great job with it, and uh, it seems to be getting more popular as well. Well, we really have made some progress. We've got an Atlanta station this year, a strong Atlanta station, so more of the folks could hear in that area. A little over 30 stations, depending on the games, like on a Thursday night game, everybody can carry us. And uh, we've been very fortunate. A lot of people have said it's like a three-and-a-half-hour commercial on a Saturday afternoon for Georgia Southern. We hope we've, you know, in some way played a part in the growth of the school. What, um, what excites you the most about doing all this, Nate? What, uh, what sort of thrill do you get uh, going out week after week covering the Eagles? I just enjoy the games for themselves. When you're involved with the coaches as much, I want us to win so bad for them because I know the preparation they put in. And you get to know the kids as you have over the years also. They're just good people and uh, working hard to put Georgia Southern on the map. This meant so much to me to get this game on national TV. I was so disappointed how the weather like it was today. That's one thing I found you can't control. I just enjoy the excitement of college football, doing college basketball and college baseball. I guess I've been around so long, I feel like I'm you know, part of the school, I guess. Uh, for me, it's more of a case of getting the network on and getting everything done after five hours when we do our tailgate show. Have I survived another Saturday? <laughs> Big third down play. We played without the clock the whole first half. Got 7.07 to go in the third quarter. Raymond pulling back to his right. Throws his looking. Throws a sideline pattern, and it is caught. First down. 
The voice of the Georgia Southern Eagles, Nate Hurst, the man who helps make it exciting for us when we can't be there and even when we can. Right side, they give it to Joe Ross. Steps over one. He's got five. He's got ten. They try to tackle the ball away from him, but he holds on. He's got a first and goal inside the five-yard line. Surviving all those Saturdays and now heart surgery, too. Here's to you, Nate, from all of your fans for a speedy recovery. We'll be listening for you during the basketball season. Second half highlights coming right up. The three, uh, the uh, extra edition. I'm Bill Edwards along with head coach Tim Stowers. And Tim, it was uh, another situation where it was just hang on for dear life. They never led in the ball game, but boy, I'll tell you, it got real close down there at the end. Well, it did get real close, and, you know, Brandon Rosell came up with another big interception right there at the end of the football game. I thought our offensive football team really needed We got one first down. We really needed to go ahead and, and run the clock out. Uh, we were unable to do it, but we did. We were able to run it down some. Uh, we had to punt the football back to them. Uh, and they, you know, they had a big play, and then they had it called back for nullified by a penalty. You know, and they were they were backed up pretty good, and the chances for, in this type of football game driving 80 or 70 yards – uh, against our defensive football team, we're not really good, but you never know what exactly is going to transpire. And you know, Brandon Rosell made the big interception, uh, and then we were able to just to send the offensive football team and down it to end the football game. It unfolded thusly: EKU missing a field goal on their first possession, and the second time they had the ball deep in their own camp, the Colonels got trapped. So, Company Commander Greg Couch getting slammed behind enemy lines on third down by freshman defensive end Edward Thomas. Taking full advantage of great field position, the second time GSU got the ball, that was the charm. In what turned out to be the winning touchdown drive, Joe Dupree started things off when he went right for six yards. James Williams then plowed through the Colonel's defensive line for 10 more to the EKU 33. Now operating from the 22, Joe Dupree got half of what was necessary, rolling again to his right. Speaking of right, next came Chris the Comet taking the pitch on the right corner and butting heads down to the two. Marlo Warthen took care of the rest, taking Dupree's pitch and with an escort that would have impressed General Schwarzkopf, including a superb block from Dexter Dawson out on the corner, Warthen could have walked into the Colonel's headquarters. 14 to three Eagles. Yeah, they did a lot of adjusting to what we were doing. And all just like all week, Coach Stiles said it was going to be a dog fight. And um, that's what it was. Yeah. You guys, um, there was, it was tough sledding in the middle there. But when it came time to, to get the job done, uh, you, you managed to do it. And besides scoring that first touchdown, we got a big touchdown in the third quarter when we really needed it. Yeah, um, just like I always tell the guys each week um, on the sideline, I always tell them to have faith. And um, it paid off today. I mean, all the hard work we've been doing all week preparing for them. You know, for a team that wasn't getting in the end zone, or for that matter, scoring, they sure could scare the wits out of you the way the Colonels mobilized their infantry. Here's Mike Penham again with 22 more of his 106 yards for the afternoon. But Scott Davis and the Southern Inhospitality Committee finally brought things to a screeching halt, forcing the Colonels to go for another field goal. Out came Mark Collins, and for the third time, Mark's effort was too short. And most of the folks at Paulson Stadium were just loving it. But the Colonels kept assaulting Greg Couch to split in Dalio Burks for 15 yards to midfield. Would these guys ever stop? Then came bad, bad Leon Brown. You talk about having a good day. This kid rushed for 161 yards. This was nine of them to the GSU 17. But the Colonels bogged down once more. Only this time, the script changed. The field goal from Mark Collins went straight through. With over six minutes to go, a nice sustained five-minute drive for a touchdown would have been nice. It'd also be nice for Gulfstream to donate a G4 to the crew of the coaches show to go to the away games in first-class comfort. Both, however, are pipe dreams. The Eagles, after getting inside the Colonel's territory, had to punt. Now, we could have picked a better time to blow this routine, but we chose this one. Punter Bill Thatcher had absolutely no chance to get the high snap, and Eastern Kentucky had the ball at the Eagle 44. 
Well, don't say the Colonels were ungrateful. They certainly know a Christmas present handed to them on a silver platter when they see one. And not to be rude guests, they took full advantage. We got two doses of castor oil in the form of Leon Brown for 17 and then 27 yards respectively. And just like that, the Colonels were within a two-point conversion of tying things up. And who got the call? Tailback Mike Penham, who said he was not impressed with Southern's defense Saturday. He met them a yard outside where he needed to be for those two points. Uh, tell you what, Mike, Rob Stockton and Nick Davis will send you a postcard from Youngstown, Ohio next week, Sport. It's our team captain, and we've been without his service for about two and a half weeks, and it's great to see him make a play like that, especially in a, in a big, critical situation in the game. And once again, I preached to him about looking forward to making the play in a critical situation. And, hey, the defensive football team made the play when they had to. And they made one more play when they had to with about 20 seconds to go. Quarterback Greg Couch scrambling for his life when free safety Brandon Roselle intercepted this offering, and this battle was history. Well, we've had a chance for revenge this week. We might get it next week when we go to Youngstown, Ohio. We'll be back to wrap it up right after this. The Georgia Southern Eagles by the hair of their chinny chin chin today uh, by a score of 14 to 12. And then we go to uh, a team up to a place where we've not only never won up there, we've never beaten them down here, we've never beaten Youngstown State. So here's another chance for revenge, Jim. Well, we've never beaten Youngstown State. You know, they've won the national championship and played for it the past two years. Uh, Marshall beat them last year and the year before that. Marshall, Youngstown beat them right here at Paulson Stadium. Of course, they also beat us in the regular season back in 1991 to kind of take away our chances to go on and, and play in the playoffs that year. You know, they've taken a lot away from us, but they have a great football team. I just hope somehow we can find a way to stay on the field with a great football team, maybe the best football team in 1AA right now. Especially if we're playing in something like uh, Dallas and Miami did the other day. Well, it really doesn't matter whether it's snowing. Uh, it really doesn't matter where we have to go to play. We're just looking forward to the opportunity to play just one more time, Bill. Yeah, uh, looks like a, uh, just again, congratulations on a great effort today from uh, from everybody involved. Well, it was a great effort. Our coaching staff did a super job. Our players did a super job getting mentally ready to play. You know, we had Thanksgiving. We had a lot of things to overcome. We found a way to make the play. We made one more play than Eastern Kentucky. Of course, we need to really continue to be mentally focused and keep it in fifth gear to have a chance to win next weekend. With that ancient cry of just one more time, and let's see if we can do it again next week when we come to you from Youngstown, Ohio. I'm Bill Edwards for head coach Tim Stowers and everyone associated with Georgia Southern Football 93. Good night from Paulson Stadium. See you next week.